what an incredible day it's been. We've managed to get a few grey sharks so far. Uh, we've just been here for a couple of hours. First bait, got our first pulls. I landed a grey shark, 260 centimeters, like you guys saw. Uh, my buddy Craig's actually hooked up to him. Uh, really good shark there, so we'll see if we can get that out. And yeah, we put out some, some more baits now on the kite. We first put baits on the drone this morning because the wind was soft enough. Uh, but we changed over to the kites now. And yeah, we'll see. The wind's not quite the right direction. Um, but the baits are out in deep enough water and the shark should be there. So I don't think it'll be too long till we get a bite. Cool guys. I've got a chaos plug on here. I'm actually just busy throwing to see if we maybe can't find a Garrick. A stray Garrick. The conditions aren't quite ideal. So yeah, might as well try our luck. The water looks decent. It's just the wind is really strong. And yeah, maybe we found a Garrick just now. I'm using a Dawa Celtica 4500H and I'm paired with my Dawa Excello uh, 11 foot 6 rod. Yeah, honestly, incredible, incredible setup when it comes to, to offshore spinning. Now this is one of the unique, fantastic qualities of Mazeppa Bay. When fishing on any of these spots, may it be Sharks Point, the island, or Boiling Pot, there's a variety of species you can target while you're waiting for those biggest sharks. The island specifically is known for the Gary Catchers, White Muscle Cracker, Yellowtail, Cobb, and several other edible species. It wasn't long and Jeremy went tight. Another great feature of this area is you can really get yourself high up on the hills, allowing a better fighting chance. That's where you can see what the fish are doing and kind of guide him in the direction you want him to go. Once the fish gets closer, you'll move down to a spot and position yourself ideally to assist with the safest possible landing. Right guys, we hooked up again. Third time lucky, let's see if we can get this fish out. But I just want to emphasize the importance of using, of using quality tackle for these big greys. Yeah, I've got the, the Dawa Saltiga Levy Drag 60. It's honestly a beast of a reel. Um, you need something with a strong drag and plenty of line capacity for these big fish when they take their long runs. And then I'm using with that, I've got, I've got my Saltiga 8 to 12 ounce rod. Um, it's a right rod to pull big fish with. Yeah, fishing that was 65 pound J braid, full to the top. And I've got about 25 meters of, of, of 2.5 mil leader. Um, that's just for abrasion resistance. Um, and then yeah, we, we dropped this, this, this bait early on the kite. Uh, we dropped the tuna head uh, one and a half hours ago and the rod went off and yeah, we hooked up to what really seems to be quite a good sized fish. It started off fighting a bit slow, like a smaller fish, but as the fight's gone on, the fish is gradually slowly growing. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how big she really is just now, hopefully. Gray, but you can't be certain it's playing a bit odd but now it seems to be growing a lot a lot bigger now this is honestly the perfect setup to pull the big fish with you gotta remember big grays they've got a tendency to take really really long runs so you need the line capacity as well as the drag strength to be able to slow these fish down so we're going to try and get this fish out now but check you guys hopefully not too long see it cheers This is an absolute patience game. Taking your time and calculating when to pull to reserve as much energy as possible for when the fish gets closer. And the top goes. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs>
even with his little ballerina dance. You guys can see it's essential to have someone with Andrew's experience to assist you in landing these prize fish. Tyron and Jeremy makes use of a very thick rope with a noose to put it around the shark's tail. This makes it a lot safer and easier to get the fish out. What a fish. This is one decent grey or dusky whaler as referred to. Just a gilly, he's a guy. And Thank you. Guide. And it seems to be like uh, our new plan uh, is working a lot by the day. <laughs> so I think if you come here, this is a, an idea of the thing that you can actually try and use. It works a bit good for you and it keeps the fish a bit closer so that it doesn't roll too much. It was actually fantastic, I enjoyed it. Now you on camera. I was looking for a black tail, actually, but uh, spotted grunter decided to eat my bait. It's a very nice size, but not to keep. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to release this one. Guys, we come to the end of another incredible day here at Mazepa Bay. Uh, we managed to get three incredible grey sharks, all over 200 kilos. Actually, in fact, all over 250 kilos. I managed to get one of 268 centimeters pre cordal, or 260 centimeters with half the nose cut off. So, <laughs> bit of an odd looking fish. We got managed to get a ginormous grey of 277 centimeters, and then my mate Craig managed to get one of 258 centimeters. So yeah, the big greys are here, and we couldn't have done it without without our guide Andrew. Honestly, Andrew, you're a machine. <laughs> I enjoyed it and I managed it at the end as well to see if I can catch myself a little uh, granta because it was so shame that they caught all the fish and I didn't catch it. <laughs> so yeah guys, we're about to head back to the Zephyr Bay Hotel and go grab some an early dinner maybe. And yeah, we'll check you guys in the morning. Hope you for some more action. Good guys. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. And if Mazeppa Bay can tell stories, what stories it would be. Top selling novels to all anglers. This place, in its own majestic way, can tell tales most anglers only dream of.